Abundant Natural Systems, Weekly Progress Update number 266. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do-it-yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution-creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is G. Sable, and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. This is our weekly progress update number 266, April 29th, 2018 edition. Today what I'd like to talk about is abundant natural systems. Earth already has abundant natural systems, but something is going seriously wrong when a person is dying every single second of starvation. Homelessness is on the rise. Uh, lack of energy infrastructure affects a huge, over a billion people on our planet. Uh, I think it's 30 million people is the statistic of number of people that will die every year of starvation. This is crazy. Even in the United States, uh, arguably the most abundant country in the world, still has outrageous numbers as far as food insecurity and people that are going hungry. It's unreal. And we have the solution. We have the solution. Like the natural, abundant natural systems already exist to provide enough food, clean water, healthy air, and energy infrastructure, housing, all of these things for everybody. We can create a world that truly works for everybody. What's lacking is ethical stewardship. And so one community is creating models for what we call living and creating for the highest good of all. Living and creating for the highest good of all people and all life on this planet. And we believe that through intelligent stewardship and through the models that we're creating, which are open source models for tools, tutorials, resources, and do-it-yourself instructions for all aspects of what we call highest good living. There's highest good food models, highest good energy models, highest good housing models, economic models, highest good fulfilled living models, uh, true or stewardship models, as well as education models, all open source, all free shared, and we're designing all the details so they can be replicated anywhere in the world as either individual components or as complete teacher demonstration communities, villages, cities, and hubs, which is what you see happening in the background of this video right now. You know, what you see are the teacher demonstration models that we have designed so far. And everything you see there will be replicable by anybody, anywhere around the world. And they're open source and they're free chairs so that people can modify them, so that people can adapt them, so that people can integrate them into the abundant natural systems that already exist in the way that works best for them. And our idea is that through intelligent stewardship, we can manage these abundant natural systems, we can repair our planet, and we can replicate these abundant natural systems, evolve and grow them, and arguably for the first time in human history, totally and completely meet the needs of every person without war, without conflict, by providing enough for everybody so that we can work together. Because we believe that humanity, if given what it needs to no longer struggle for survival, will come together and work together and do the right thing and provide for everybody on the planet because it's possible, because we can, and because it's the right thing to do. And so we think this is really difficult for people to do that though, if they're struggling for their own survival, if they're struggling to make ends meet, if they're struggling to put food on the table, if they're struggling to house their family. And so we're creating solutions for all of that. Do it yourself, open source solutions, so that the abundant natural systems all that already exist can be leveraged in such a way that continues to grow and evolve those systems and improve upon them and to provide for everybody that would like to participate in a project like ours or to take what it is that we're doing and create their own project. And so if we can create a self-replicating model, and our path to doing that is also quite simple, it's to make it easy enough affordable enough and demonstrate what it is that we're doing as attractive enough so that the idea will spread on its own. And the open source and free shared aspects of everything that we're creating is designed to do to meet those goals, to make it easy enough and affordable enough because it's open source and free shared so the foundations don't cost anything. And the tools, tutorials, and resources are designed to make it easy enough for people to replicate our ideas and everything that we're designing to evolve and improve our ideas around the world to work in a global cooperative, a global collaborative, 
to create a world that works for everybody, and to open source and free share in a way that also invites the world to participate. You know, initially starting with 50 pioneer members living on the property, inviting 50 volunteers to come and help and work with our all-volunteer team, and then eventually hosting thousands, tens of thousands, and then ultimately hundreds of thousands of people annually coming and visiting and experiencing what one community is and working in cooperation collaboration with other teacher demonstration hubs around the world. And if we can launch this and make it easy enough, affordable enough, and demonstrate its attraction enough so that the idea will spread on its own, and by spread on its own, I mean inspire just two additional projects the first year to start using what it is that we're creating and building their own versions of one community. And if those two plus one community can work together and inspire four more projects to start the year after that, and then eight projects the year after that, and then 16, 32, 64, if you run the numbers, it's possible for us to positively and permanently transform this world within 30 years by inviting and creating a model that could include every single person on the planet planet within 30 years if that self-replicating model were to continue. And it's not designed so that everybody has to participate. Absolutely not, because that wouldn't be realistic. To think that we're creating a model where every single person in the world is going to choose to participate, I'm not sure if that's really realistic, but we can reach that tipping point. We can reach that tipping point of participation, which really does not require even 50% of the world, really doesn't even require 30% of the world. So we can reach that tipping point of participation where we can possibly impact the lives of every single person on this planet by simultaneously addressing the greatest challenges of this generation and generations to come through the highest good model for living and creating and addressing the foundations of comprehensive sustainability, which I've already mentioned, and take sustainability and evolve it from the physical foundation of sustainability that everybody knows, food, housing, and energy infrastructure, by adding the emotional foundations of sustainability, which we have identified as fulfilled living practices, which is social architecture, uh, high good education models, high good economic models, and the true earth stewardship that takes these abundant natural systems and works with them and improves them. A model of living that gives more than it takes. Gives more than it takes to the planet, gives more than it takes to the individual, gives more than it takes to the community, and is designed to create abundance for everybody that participates and to share that abundance through open source and free sharing models uh, designed for replication. So this is what our team is creating, and we are a 100% volunteer team. We've been at it now for seven years. Everything we're doing is open source and free shared. We're a nonprofit organization. And with all of this said, here is one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of abundant natural systems, evolving, improving, and leveraging those for the benefit of all life on our planet. Check it out. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team continued with testing different redesigns of the Murphy Bed storage area in 3D. What you see shown here is the most recent of these. The core team, working with Michael Hagler, senior graphic designer and artist, also completed another round of editing and testing different layout options shown here for the compressed earthblock village parts of the Seven Villages book we're developing. Shadi Kennedy, artist and graphic designer, completed his fifth week leading the development of the Murphy Bed instructions. This week, Shadi finished the rest of our updated layout for the five-page assembly instructions for the nightstands. You can see these here as version 3.2 of these designs. Dean Schulz, architectural designer, continued with the Cobb Village Pod 3 render updates. Here's update 111 of Dean's work. This week, Dean began working on the textures and lighting for this new dining hall view from the second floor. Mike Kowalski, game developer, finished his sixth week helping update our Recycled Materials Village Pod 6 renders that are too big for anything but a gaming computer. What you see here is a collage of all the renders he finished for the outdoor dining area, plus these three updated final renders including two more of the outdoor exercise area, and this updated final render of the dining area that also shows the exercise area in the background. Michelle Pinzaru, interior designer and architectural drafter, completed her 13th week working on the Treehouse Village Pod 7 residential renders. This week, she finished the textures and other design details needed to produce these three final external renders. One community is also creating an open-source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, 
provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. This week, the core team working with Dipti Dondurker, electrical engineer, continued developing the lighting specifics for the city center. This is Dipti's 72nd week volunteering on this task, and the focus this week was testing lighting and creating and adding to the website this comparison of the different diffuse fixture types that meet our lead sustainability criteria. Hayes Lay, structural engineer, continued work on the city center's structural engineering by reviewing the new beam calculation and testing spreadsheets we've created. We'd say this review process is now 80% complete. Yun Lin, bridge design engineer, completed his fourth week helping with the beam design and calculation spreadsheet creation for the city center structural engineering. This week, he added TJI deflection criteria and required web stiffeners into the spreadsheets and researched the impact of utilities holes in the joists. Anvita Kumari Pandey, civil engineer, completed her third week helping with the duplicate city center materials and costs. This week's focus was completing the second floor estimations, working on third and top floor estimation work, and developing a summary sheet. You can see some of this work here. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. This week, the core team continued working on the garden tools list by researching and integrating large-scale machine plans like tractors and their attachments. You can see some of these new additions here. The core team also continued writing the behind-the-scenes narrative and detailed food rollout plan for the second landing party group of 20 people. You can see version 2 of this work in progress here. One community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. This week, the core team completed the initial review, formatting, editing, and content creation for the assessment forms page. You can see some of last week's work here, and the page is now 50% complete. The one community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, the highest good network software team, consisting of Samya Manahar, Shubra Mittal and Swati Jayasilan continued their work on the software. This week, they filtered the users in the front end, depending on active and inactive users, changed the table headers to fit in single line, removed tasks options, updated the time log page to show the number of notifications and number of action items for a user whose time log is being viewed, and fixed issues with adding personal links, duplicate project names, and deleting active projects. They also updated the reports bar charts to show the total hours contributed by each member in the current week in descending order, with the drop-down to include, exclude members from the chart, included a pie chart to show the number and percentage of members who have contributed and not contributed in the current week, added an arrow function to show if hours increased or decreased from the previous week, and added functionality for seeing who has contributed to projects and for adding and removing members from project reports. Well, there you have it. There is one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of leveraging, maximizing, and integrating abundant natural systems into the models that we're creating to create transformational global change. If you'd like to see more details, more specifics, links to all the open source content, you can visit our written blog. Also, if you'd like to see an email every time one of these updates comes out, you can send an email to onecommunityupdates at gmail.com and we will add you to our newsletter list. Or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or any of our social media networks and manage your updates that way. We're on all the different social media networks to make it as easy as possible to do that. We are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, we are on LinkedIn, we are on Tumblr, we are on Reddit, Pinterest, Instagram, and about 15 other social media networks. So whatever your favorite social media network is, we are most likely there to make it as easy as possible to share the information that we're producing. If you like the easiest way to help us, of course, that is pretty much it. Share information on social media. Uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our progress through as many social media networks as you are willing, and help us get the word out. 
Uh, also, we have a helping page that has lots of other ways that you can participate and get involved. And of course, if you're already somebody who has donated to us just for watching to the end of the video, if you send us emails, comments on our videos, all that stuff is actually really helpful. We do appreciate it. So whatever way it is that you are following our progress or supporting our work, thank you very much. We do appreciate it. And uh, until next week, we will continue to work towards maximization of abundant natural systems. And we thank you for watching the end. And we will, of course, keep on keeping on. Thank you.